As you can see here with me, we have Paul Fontaine and Jeff Hawkins, the hosts of The Dynamite Show, which is a AEW Dynamite, essentially a post-game show for every episode of Dynamite on the uh, Fight Game Media Network Patreon. Fellas, we just got done watching the Go Home Show to Full Gear. And I want to get your thoughts on some of the main angles and the main matches going into that show. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other matches that I don't think are that important. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll get through a lot of this stuff. But first of all, Jeff, this is your first time on, on this show. So welcome. Hi. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul's with me when we did the Crown Jewel show not uh, a couple yeah, what, yeah. week and a half ago or so. Yeah. So fun. welcome back. All right. Thank you. So we're going to we're going to start out hot. Because uh, Jeff has a, a hot take. It's a hot hypothesis concerning a line that MJF said in the promo tonight when John Moxley was beat up by the firm. Jeff, I don't even I can't do it any more justice than yeah. that. So why don't you just go and, and share the thoughts that came to your mind as these words came out of MJF? I, I have another weird hypothesis that we'll bring up when we talk about the main event angle, but just watching this go-home promo, the first two lines, the first line MJF used was the exact line word-for-word word CM Punk used when, when he joined the Nexus. John, I hope you're laying there in a tremendous... <laughs> you can hear me, and you're laying there in a tremendous amount of pain. <laughs> now, now, most people... I. At first, I viewed that as, okay, yet another dig at CM Punk that AEW is taking, et cetera, right. et cetera. And then he said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is that he didn't exist, which is both the usual suspects and also CM Punk Raven from Ring of Honor. But then but then I, when I said that, uh, a Twitter follower of mine replied to me, he goes, yeah, but he's quoting CM Punk. And I went, yeah, you're right. What if... <laughs> this is hot I'm, rubber I room God, time yeah no i get that <laughs> what if we've all been worked in some way what what if this has all been a tremendous work to believe that cm punk's never coming back to aew and that and that and and that this is maybe a little hint that he's there Look, I the the fight's been reported by a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. I am not I am not going out there and saying this is what's happening. And, and that you know, I am not conspiracy theorist. I am a I'm a man of letters and I build cases and things like that. <laughs> but it was just one of those things where it's just like, boy, wouldn't that be something if if the devil that we're thinking doesn't exist is actually CM Punk here? And that and that and that's just it. I mean. I think people would turn on Tony pretty yeah. quickly if that yes. happened. Trust me. Yes. But it's just something clever to think about. I got, I got far more out there. Thing well, the, 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 the thing that I like about it is it is the takes that happen on Twitter. Like people will put these uh, clips of, of matches where, um, you know, certain wrestlers, favorite wrestler. And then he kind of does a spot out of, yeah. a, out of a famous match and they compare him. They go, Oh, look, you know, and, and like when, when we were younger, like we may have like called it out, but we just had our VCR tape and, you know, we're just telling ourselves that that this stuff happened and people can share it with all their Twitter followers and then it goes viral. So all that stuff is great. And that's why I like the take, because it is something <laughs> that can kind of fester out there. And then it kind of creates a little bit more of an intrigue. And I will say uh, I, I, this is coming from my heart. What you just said. Is way more interesting than what they did for two hours. <laughs> yes, tonight. no, the internet is undefeated in terms of interesting angles yeah. and, and putting things together. Like, there's nothing better than when AEW just drops a storyline. They go, "No, it's long-term storytelling." <laughs> when they remember it, and you know, it's it's the internet has lots of fascinating theories, and the, and it's like it's like being on the old television with pity message board where it's like man what do you think is going to happen at the end of breaking bad well i think <laughs> gus spring is going to go and blah 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 but you know it, those things are far more interesting oftentimes not breaking bad necessarily because that was a pretty awesome ending but yeah. you know that they, they they come up fans of things come up with far more interesting theories than sometimes what they do and it's usually far more straight ahead and i realize that that's why i'm not saying oh this is what i think is going to happen no i mean it, it would be tremendous it would be the, uh, How would you feel though? How would I, you feel if this was all just for show? So I would laugh at first in, in like a nervous way, 
And then I'd be frustrated, like yes. what I imagine yeah. the fan base would be. And so that's why it's it's hard to think that this is what. But again, like just the theory, the fan theory, the the hypothesis, like that takes some connection to a product. And so I like that, that you brought up the message board thing, because the reason why that stuff is important or was maybe back in the day a little bit more than today, you had to be a real fan of this show and watch so in-depthly to even come up with something like that. So. <laughs> The fact that you did just means that you also watch very closely. And uh, I would have never called out the the CM Punk Nexus promo. Ne like It would have never crossed my mind. And it's not like I didn't watch that stuff, but like this is something that, that you're you're good at. So I appreciate the effort and I it's very creative. And again, it's, it was way more interesting than anything. I look forward to all the message board negativity <laughs> about my statement right there. Would it would it be any worse than what they did at Double or Nothing with MJF, you know, oh, threatening the, to leave the whole... and yeah. and the oh, promo? Well, Mox called it out, right? He said you your, your Pillman stuff, right? Yeah, and would it and would it play into the stuff that Tony said before All Out, where he said we're going to do more reality based angles? Oh, we're going back down this road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, no. you know, like it, it adds up. I don't think it's happening, but put it this yeah. way wouldn't be the certainly wouldn't be the most surprising thing that happened in 2022 so yeah. maybe maybe punk is the real pillman and mjf is the fake pillman oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right so um let's actually talk about this main event because i i don't know anything i've not talked to john moxley about wrestling in three or four months so i've no i've no information about this match in general but when i watch him and when, I thought he had a really bad night tonight, by the way. He fumbled words. He forgot stuff. He didn't hit his mark. He was supposed to stay in the middle of the ring, and he left, and he had to come back. He, he had a bad night. But I also sense that he's not I, – I, I don't. it's not that he's not invested in what they're doing. I think he knows that it's his job. But I sense that he's protecting – I think, I think John, Jonathan Good is protecting the John Moxley character a little bit because he has kind of been he he was supposed to be you know his character was supposed to be put to pasture like three different times and because they keep screwing things up he's had to come back and, and be champ so i sense that there's a little bit of like you know i i i'm gonna put this guy over but i need something to hold on to so that you know when i re regroup and, and everything i'm i'm still good uh but that that was the one thing that i saw tonight and the second thing was I feel like MJF ran out of material. Like he's been tremendous, but he's also been given like 15 minutes to just go out there and, and, and go. Right. And he had, a, he had less time. He had to share the stage. And it seemed like because of that, whatever he had put together just wasn't as great of a story or great of a promo as we usually see. So all that being said, I want to know your guys' feelings on this match. And, and Paul, you can go ahead and, and tell me sure. what you think about, you know, what's going to happen here. Is it, I, I'm assuming that you're kind of disappointed in the build like, like I am, but uh, yeah, I don't yeah. want to put I mean, in your mouth. I, I said like before tonight that, you know, this match, this pay-per-view was a one match show. Um, and, uh, and it was Mox MJF and it was enough for me. Like I I've been really into this story the whole way. There's a lot of different ways they can go. There's different things they've built up. And, you know, and we come up things with things in our own mind and sometimes they happen, sometimes they don't. But I thought tonight they took a match that I was super excited about and made me way less interested in it um, between the attack on, you know, from the firm on it on Mox, which looked comical. Um, some of the strikes like they were barely touching him and Mox's selling was like non-existent. And then so when MJF did that line about I hope you're in pain, I'm like did you watch the attack <laughs> um, and then like the guys coming out and running down and Jeff compared it to the, the way the rock would make saves in the, the stuff you're re reviewing right now on, yeah, on yeah, yeah. media Patreon yeah. where the guys would come one at a time Way and he just yeah. lay him down with one punch. And then the stuff with, with Ethan page who might be challenging for the title in a couple weeks uh, was just comical. I think, so, he, I think he killed the live crowd tonight. Oh, well, I think the live crowd was killed a long time before that. Um, but I expected MJF to get them back, and he didn't. Yeah. Um, I think they got killed when they found out the Elite wasn't there, uh, personally. I think they, they they kind of dropped after that, and then the Britt Baker promo didn't you know, confuse them. And, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happened tonight. But, um, yeah, so I, you know, my, I think 
here's the thing I said on the Dynamite show. I think the most surprising thing that could happen on the pay-per-view would be that John Moxley and and MJF have like a 25 30 minute match, good match that ends clean. Yeah. You know, like with no angle. Like we're all expecting something to happen right. and we're all expecting MJF to win and that you know I the fact whether he's a heel or a baby face, I don't know. I expect him to be a heel coming out of this. Yes. But I think a lot of people are expecting him to be a baby face. So I'm, I don't know what they can do, but uh, I do, I still have faith in their, in their track record so far, but they're testing it. Jeff, do you think that this MJF character, and I don't know if you guys saw the post video, but MJF, I saw uh, Nick posted in our, in our Facebook group because he was there. MJF, did the whole call and response thing with the crowd. Are you here to see J John Moxley? Boo. Are you here? Were you here to see MJF and cheers at the end of the show? You have just walked into a trap because I talked about this on dynamite in that they have a problem with call and response heels. Yeah. In AEW between Brit and her DMD. And then, uh, who was the other one tonight, Paul swerve whose house swerves house. They have a real problem with this and it ends up turning, uh, people, so I, here, here's, I think, my, here's my question to you, which mm -hmm. is MJF leading up to this match with, with John Moxley. He was a heel who the fans reacted to because he's yes. just such a great speaker. He's such a great promo and he's done baby face things in this build with Moxley. And so I think a lot of the fans aren't reacting to it. Like maybe they thought they would because they don't want to buy into it, knowing what we think is going to happen at the pay-per-view. And so he's he, he was getting a little bit of a tepid response tonight to the stuff that he was doing, which like him saving Moxley in a, in a different wrestling universe, it gets the biggest pop of the night and fans are going crazy. Like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. But this kind of smart and slightly cynical fan base goes, Mm, they're trying this to trick this, us. Yes, I'm not this, sure this what's going Yeah, on this crowd's ahead of them, and they, they just assume this is all for show, and they're waiting for the rug to be pulled. And I think that's a general weak. The general weakness of this pay per view and the pay per view build is that it's not a match that that we're paying to see. We're paying to see the angle. Yeah. And I think, and it's not a very hot one either. The way I described this this go home promo by Mox, God bless him was it felt like this was the dress rehearsal. And that, and that okay, I'm going to have another chance to go out there now. I mean, you're forgetting the date. Of the <laughs> I, I, I will forgive that in some I ways. But I, 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 I just don't know, and, and Paul and I were talking about this as well, but just don't know if the lackadaisical thing where he's kind of being dismissive and stuff, don't know if that's a character choice or if that's an energy choice. And mm -hmm. that that's also a little bit confusing to me as well. Most of this card has no heat to it whatsoever. And and, and that's also a problem. People are going to pay to see the matches. I get that. But at the same time, I mean, it's, it's a major red flag to me that, that, you know, that, that, that AEW has a problem with promos. I, I've kind of said that Tony has great ingredients, but he doesn't necessarily know how to cook or put them all together at times because these builds are terrible. He has three months to build programs and we're waiting until a week week and a half to really get it going or whatever as opposed yeah. to say the old territory version like crockett you had you used to have one but now you, but then they went to two pay-per-views where you had the bash in the summer and you had starcade in, in the winter and then you had four months of just cutting promos and slow step-by-step -step builds and then everybody's dying to see the match and the blow off and then we go to something else it feels like a lot of this card up and down is is doing the thing that the attitude era in the mid 90s had a real problem with was they booked pay-per-views to then get you to watch the free television. And I think that's what everybody's waiting for here. I you know, everybody wants to see what happens with MJF, but they don't necessarily want to see the match. And I think it's it this is I would not be surprised if this pay-per-view buy rate was really weak. I mean like surprisingly weak. So I looked into this because uh Meltzer, Dave Meltzer posted on Twitter the other day. He's like, yeah. asked about 135,000. 135, right? Over or under. And I said, way under. I said, under. I think it's under 100. I'll it, go that low. I and, said, and, slightly over because I, I think I may be overestimating MJF as a draw. Well, okay. So that's the positive to this thing, right? Yeah. If, if this character's over, if he is the one that the fans want to see win the title, then guessing the over is not a bad guess. 
However, that would also be higher in a pay-per-view buy rate or higher in pay-per-view buys than the last pay-per-view, which had CM Punk on it. And he's not on this show. So they would have to outdo that show, which was kind of a disappointing number in of itself. But I picked under just because I'm, I'm just not, I mean, some of it is I was at the last two AEW pay-per-views. So there's a little bit more when you're there, there's a little bit yeah. more, you're with the like-minded fans and they're all excited. So you feel it a little bit more and I'm not there this time, but just seeing our, our message or not our message board, but the, the, the group and seeing how few people are posting in the threads these days about this show. There's a little bit of information there that, that helps me guess, but I'm just not feeling like this doesn't feel like a special, special show. Uh, and that's why I picked uh, I picked under, but I'm I'm hopeful that that something clicked with some of these people because you always want to see the business be strong. But yeah, okay, so we're we're all thinking MJF is taking this title, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So the next match I want to talk about a little bit more in detail is this Elite versus the Death Triangle, and the match in of itself will be fine. It'll be what we saw already at the last pay per view. But the intrigue is this weirdo angle that they're doing that they're not telling anybody about. There's no information. You have to be an Internet fan to know what's going on. And they're kind of teasing the Internet fan a little bit by not showing these guys faces as if, you know, to, to say, well, you're going to have to pay for the pay for the show if you want to see them. And then they put the stupid graphic up tonight. <laughs> which you now you killed all the intrigue or, or any of the mystery by putting the graphic up. You might as well have put them on the show. I didn't get that at all. Oh, oh my joke was that, that Pat came out just to ruin it. And he said, hey, come on, you all know what it is. And the guy in the production truck, went, well, put up the graphic. I guess, yeah. you know, I guess that's all we can do right now. I mean, to, yeah, the, the natural thing to do would be, you know, uh, we'll be there um you know and and you know if you if you guys we know who you are if you want to fight we'll be there waiting yeah and then don't put the graphic up i think that would have be been a more Cutler, compelling Nakazawa thing and Don <laughs> Callis and a six man or okay yeah. so I, I get why he's going to this one too many times in my opinion is because it's worked for him in the past yeah. this surprise you know, kind of leading the fan, like the fans know, but you're not exactly telling them. And it has worked in the past. So I get going to it, but then putting the graphic up was weird. It was almost like he was hedging. He was like, should I do it? Should I not? What's going on here? What do I need to do? I, I want to sell this match, but then I don't want to actually give it to them on TV. Like it was weird. It was a weird decision. It was a half ass tease. It yeah. really was. Well, it, it wasn't was a one... tease at all. Well, no, well, yeah. well yeah, actually, you're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, but it was one of those things where it's like, oh, we're going to get the big crowd pop. It's it's almost like they scripted this. And it's a, here's where the crowd's going to pop <laughs> huge and everybody's going to want to buy the show. Yeah, and they did And they just went, huh, yeah, we knew that already. Because they, because they, because I think the moment they put that graphic up, it was like, oh, crap, we're not going to get to see them. So they yeah. kind of, there was like that little pop and then it was like, oh. And, but, and this, but this is another one where, at least I feel like we kind of know the the result, like put the belts back on the elite. We're going to get doing what we had been wanting to do this whole time and just start from scratch again. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Uh, and really, the intrigue is just them being back. How do they look? Are they heels? Are they mad? Is there anything related to, you know, why they were gone? Are the announcers going to say anything? That's the only thing I'm interested in. Like, who cares if they win the titles? These <laughs> titles are you know they're, they're they're fun they're fun matches but they don't really mean much um so you know again the 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 result isn't isn't the the important thing here i had um, forgotten that that was the match on the last pay-per-view so yeah. that's two matches on this show that we saw at the last pay-per-view yes yeah. all right uh so quick hitters here because this is important at least to me because i i think the acclaimed are Oh wait! Can uh, I get my pick on this? Thing? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a great match where where the Lucha <laughs> Brothers are gonna give a lot to you know right before Pac hits Phoenix with a hammer, and then everybody's going to be disappointed by the ending. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then, uh, the acclaimed against Swerve in our glory for the tag team titles. The acclaimed are unique in that uh, they they gave them the ball and they were like run and there's a lot a lot of other young talent who they've been like 
mm, you're going to get this far. We're not going to let you go. But the acclaimed are, are, are not that they've actually. So I feel like, you know, they're, they're even, I, I, I heard, I think Dave mentioned that, you know, their, their stuff was doing a little bit better ratings wise than some other stuff. So that's a positive thing. Uh, I don't even care because I just like the fact that they're this homegrown team. We, we haven't been beat over the head with these guys over the last 10 years, like some of the other wrestlers on this, uh, in this company. But uh, the, uh, the, the thing about this match too, is I think we expect an angle coming out of this match too, right? Like there's some swerve and Keith Lee stuff that people mm -hmm. have been thinking that's happening for the last like two or three shows and it hasn't happened and maybe it happens here, but uh, it is a, it is a, uh, this is the rematch of their great match, right? Or the not, not the rematch, like the rematch to the rematch, I think. It feels like the rematch to the rematch to the rematch to the rematch. It's, yeah. it's been a 50-50 build like up in Stamford, and it's been the law of diminishing returns ever since that first hot match. Now, yeah. good for the acclaim, they're kind of AEW's new age outlaws, and there's a problem within that, is that they're a very entertaining, very over group. But you got a lot of teams in there that are very, very good. And yeah. it's like, and so you get the, this kind of fan base asking, well, why are they holding on to the titles when these other teams are so much better than them? Yeah. I'm not sure they're asking that yet, but I think it's it getting will. there. Yeah. It'll get, it'll get, it will get there. There, there will yeah. be a point in this run where the fans turn on them a little bit. Yeah. Where they beat that. FTR clean as a sheet or something. Right. Yeah. And everybody goes. Well, they, the, the thing that, I'm seeing is that they're making a choice right now of writing Billy Gunn out of these matches at the start of the match. They've done it twice in a row now, and it's kind of killing the crowd mm -hmm. because they want to see Billy. They want to chant, Oh, scissors, scissors and, daddy. Daddy. Yeah. and then, you know, they tried it tonight and it didn't catch. And, and so the matches themselves don't have a lot of heat. I don't think they'll do that at the pay-per-view. I think, I think we're going to see a very different crowd on, on Saturday uh, yeah. or Sunday. I hope listening. if they better, um, yeah, <laughs> it better be a different crowd. This yeah. almost felt like a WWE crowd. I gotta be honest with you. Well, there wasn't very many people. Uh, Nick said two thousand. Yeah, the building, that's what he. But... That's what his guess was. And, and there yeah. was lots of photos Were where there tarps. Yeah. Well, it was. I don't know if it was a tarp or not, but you'd see like the, the the bottom um section, and then as it got as it went up, it, there was like nobody there. So okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what what do you think they're gonna do creative wise? Uh, who who wins this match? Do the acclaimed keep the titles? Do they switch the titles so that we keep this feud going? It doesn't seem like that's the best case because, like Jeff said, there's so many tag teams that can be the next match. I think I think the acclaimed win clean, and there's dissension teased, but we don't actually see the breakup until you know maybe dynamite or or sometime after. No, I think they do that here. I, th I think probably like Keith Lee ends up costing Swerve the match, and then they, they just do the breakup here. Yeah, that Swerve and Keith Lee match, I'm not too sure about that when it comes. I'm, the they, the yeah. follow-up, it, it reminds me of Hobbs and Starks, which gives me bad memory. I'd be here feeling. for Keith Lee turning full-on heel here. That's what I thought, too. That'd be but the most interesting choice, I think. So so the two of them as a heel, and maybe yes. like they actually win the belts? No. Oh, they don't just, win the belt. They don't win the belts, but Keith Lee just decides the hell with this. I'm going full heel. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. What is what is his catchphrase? His one word indubitably. indubitably. And there you go. <laughs> I wanted yeah! to, I wanted to end this I wanted to end that with uh, with the word, but I forgot it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh it feels like it's Jamie Hater's time. Yes. Yep. What do you think, Jeff? It's AEW policy to miss the guy's off ramp and then try and come back to it. But here we are coming back to it. So, yes, you got to do it. You got to do it here, especially since you're turning Brit baby face. Yeah. Well, or, or Brit's turning herself baby face or maybe Soraya it's little, it's turning everybody else it's, baby it's face. It's all of that. But yes, yes it's I, all I, the I, mixing I, pot of stuff. Tony, look, I don't Brit know. Brit eliminated all doubt tonight. <laughs> all these all these big surprises that they've gotten from the other company. And not a one of them is taken because of the treatment of them. And now they're all turned. I mean, I think Tony may turn heel eventually here <laughs> down here too. We already just turned Athena. Soraya's Sarai, is doing her own good job of turning herself heel. And now we got <laughs> Tony doing it. It's just, yeah. Tony Ruby hasn't next. been anything as a champ. And we were all excited for her to come in and finally have a shot to do something. And it's just, it's just there, man. 
Uh, okay, so we have this ROH uh, title match, and since Paul is the historian, I'll let him go first. <laughs> um, I think I, I don't like the f- fatal four way aspect of this match, but I think they'll I think they'll make it make it so that it is a good match. Uh, I would have rather seen uh, Jericho and, and and Claudio and maybe figure out something else for for Danielson and Guevara because they did those matches on TV already. But um, I, I, the, 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 this is either I mean you have two ex ROH champions in this match, so if you wanted to tell that storyline of you know the ROH champion coming back, I feel it's better told in a one on one match. So I don't imagine Jericho's losing here, but I don't know. What do you guys think, Paul? Uh, I'm going to steal Jeff's thought. No. Uh, well, what are you going to say if I, if I agree with you that I think it's going to happen just because it was your thought. He asked me first, yeah. uh, it's an ODQ match. Yeah. So Jericho going to hit somebody with a belt. Um, bat. I think, I think he's going to hit or with the, with the bat. I mean, well, but they ruined the, the, the bat is dead. They, he hit. No, no, no. Oh, that's, that's, che- that's Chekhov's bat. It's just been yeah. introduced in the first act. It's going to come back in the third because he would have got DQ'd. Yeah, I mean, so, so he, Danielson he, like shook it off like it was like a, a slap to the face. Yeah. Like it didn't even bother. He knocks well, out you know, you Sammy. turn your neck when you get pile driven. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all of that. They're teaching. He knocks out Sammy connectly. with the bat, connectly. and then, but here's the question where Jeff is going to disagree. Claudio pins Sammy mm. to win to win the belt after Jericho knocks him out, and then uh, and then Adam Cole shows up to challenge Claudio at uh, final battle. That's my guess. What do you think, Jeff? Is that, is that was that? Did he steal your exact take? No, 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 no. My exact take was that Jericho uses the bat on Sammy and pins him. It, that I mean, that's interesting. He's sneaky. He's. I liked. Uh, I like Adam Cole coming back though. Okay, I, so I, so so this is this has been my prediction going back weeks and weeks and weeks. Because when I looked at I that ROH, you. well, yeah. when I looked at that ROH champions list, I go, okay, a lot of these are fun. There are really fun ones you could bring back if they wanted to, but there's one guy who stands out as a possible main eventer, and that's Adam Cole. So that's why I thought I, I would I hope that he's ready to come back. And that would be a nice, nice little surprise for the crowd. That, that I think that one that they are wanting, actually. Um, so I'm all for that. I would love to see Adam Cole be the guy to beat Jericho, but then again, can he be a babyface? Because the babyface has got to beat Jericho, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I said Claudio. Jay Briscoe is the guy to cut promos here and beat him, but that won't happen. But, uh, you know, well, I mean, that would just blow. That well, let's, just blow let's, everybody's let's mind. put it this way. If Britt Baker is turning babyface, why not the boyfriend, too? They bring out their Owen belts and sure, do sure. joint promos like they were doing before. And There you go. All right. Can I, babysit their kids. So uh, two more. I'm, I'm, we're not going to get to all of them, uh, but 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 just two more. The ones that I think are, are the most interesting We've talked about it a little bit. Britt Baker and Soraya. Uh, Britt was the underdog hometown baby face of all baby faces tonight. Uh, Soraya tried to walk it back, but still did not work. Uh, she just was very defensive. Even her best friend, Renee, could not help her tonight. And so I, I, I like the fact that we have a women's match and there doesn't have to be a title for it. I think that's great. Um I, are they going to lean into this Brit thing, which is my my question, and and that this is for you, Jeff? Because can you beat Soraya in her return match? Because if she wins, unless it's a great match, if she has a great performance and it's a great match, maybe she's going to be able to to win that crowd. But I can't imagine this crowd is going to be behind her in this match. You know, in the 80s, they just say, send her out there, and depending on the reaction, we'll change the finish. There you go. I would probably hold off on picking a finish here. I really would, because you don't know. And, boy, I man, I do not want to see Saraya cutting. I used to be in WWE where they were bigger stars. Just get that cheap heat. I really don't. I, but... I think you got to go with the straight ahead. I think she needs to beat Brit here. I really do. I mean, the, the, the stories that they love to tell in wrestling right now are the, oh, she gave a noble effort and still lost. Yeah. But those don't work anymore because no one has any emotional resonance in those stories. It's just, oh, you got beat. 
and and they don't know how to build them back up after getting beat again. So I would say you let her, you let let Britt do the honors for right now, and then we're gonna be able to build her up as a title contender against Hater. It's it's very easy. She's not gonna lose anything out of that. What do you think, Paul? I agree. I don't think he can beat Soraya on her first match back, but I don't. I think the crowd is going to hate that finish. Yep. I think they're gonna, not going to like Soraya to begin with. Yeah. And uh, Britt's going to be a massive baby face. I expect some sort of interference. Maybe Tony. Maybe Thun- maybe Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Like somebody attacking Britt, you know, like one of her enemies. Um, and then that leading to the finish. And then, you know, and then that leads to wherever they're going. Um, Britt as the beltless person in that tr- in that group could be an interesting dynamic as well. So I if I had any confidence that this match was going to be a really good match, you could do the Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch thing from SummerSlam where you do the handshake and and it's completely fine. And it's about respect. It's like, okay, I underestimated you. You know, you're you're great. You're great. The problem is. The match has to be good and, and and Soraya has to like, you know, be the kick out of stuff and 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 show her heart and all of those things I, i'm not convinced that that's going to be good enough but we'll see because you know i'm sure they're thinking the same things we're thinking right like that's this has got to be like they got a mess on their hands is what yeah, they have. yeah. when you when you said bianca and, and becky at summertime i was thinking about the first one. Oh, the first oh, one just, just the punch and then the over. Seconds, boom <laughs> yeah well, they they go go AEW, you know yeah. dexter and pins her and yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. Last one I, I want to go over. And uh, this is one that I'm not I'm not going to be excited about this match. I'm not excited about the steel cage stipulation. I don't think it's necessary. My worry here is that the only reason the cage exists is so that Christian Cage can find a way to interfere and be even more of a dick than he currently is. And he said it on the uh, no, was it him? No, no, no. It was Renee. It was Renee who said it in the the the, pa- the video package tonight. She said it has to be in a cage so that nobody can get in, and you know it's just one on one. And and she was focusing on that part, which told me Christian Cage is absolutely getting in this match, involved in this match somehow. And I, you know, I'm I'm not the world's biggest lucha source fan i think people who listen to me know that and i am a, a big uh, jack perry fan but it's been rough as a jack perry fan for this pretty much this entire year i did i did watch some pluto tv the other day threw it on the 90210 channel <laughs> watched watched his pops i was like man if he had the charisma of his pops this guy'd be the top star in the business all right all, all that said um be more I, my, rooting, Jack. Be <laughs> <laughs> my worry, my worry is that Jungle Boy, even with a win, like he's he's not getting much here. So we're building to Christian and Jungle Boy. So I kind of think Lucha Source is winning. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know really what to think. But was interested in what you guys thought. Can I go, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. I think that this cage match is building to Jack doing something crazy on the cage. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Much like I, I use the example of Cody versus Wardlow and the Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks. And I think it's going to be something dangerous and crazy off of this cage for the big thing. Because I don't think Christian Cage can do anything physical just yet. I, I don't think he's been cleared. That's That's the issue I have with it. And I'm a little worried, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, my reference is a little... It was a little uh, unthoughtful at the time, but it was just like, well, what's he <laughs> over under on on Jack getting an injury where he's out for six months in this match because he tries something that he probably oh has no business trying. And I'm not hoping he's injured, but I think he's going to try and go big on this with, for a with moment. The dinosaur having to catch him. Well, but but he's but Luchasaurus is always willing to do that kind of stuff, yeah. too. I mean, he's game for that. So I could see him saying, yeah, sure, let's try it. Why not? Um I think Jack Perry has to win this match, quite frankly, because he is so ice cold in terms of in terms of this angle. And it has been the entire time. Look, I love Christian in the turtleneck. I love the Gary Hart vibes at times, but and being a tall human compared to the everybody else. Yes. I mean, he's a giant. I mean, it's almost like JJ with Tully where you would look at and go, my God, you're bigger than he is. Um, 
but he needs a big win. And, and it's weird that he's probably the coldest of all the pillars yeah. supposedly here. And it's like, well, he's been, he's been the young guy for, for three years now of AEW. When are we going to put the rocket to him and give him some big wins and see what he can do as a quote unquote star. And I think we got to do it sometime. I think here's pretty much a good place to start. Go for I, Paul. I, I think his match will surprise people. Um, I, I said on the dynamite show that I thought it might steal the show. Um, I think most people are expecting the trios title match to do that, but I just went on a limb and said this. Um, I hope nobody gets hurt. I definitely think there's a possibility. I also had a wild theory. I didn't say it on our, on our show, but maybe this is leading to uh, like a, a Tony Khan uh, dream match of cage on a pole. Oh <laughs> Did Jeff just leave? <laughs> no. Don't even put that out there. We're already getting, <laughs> we're already getting King of the Hill matches and or King of the Mountain matches. Oh my god! XD, so. Yeah, Cage oh. on a pole. Christian Cage on a pole. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so the other matches, which we're, we're we, we don't really need to talk about this, but Ethan Page, he does, he still does not have the other person in his bracket yet, and uh, we are a few days away from this pay per view. Uh, there's the Jade Cargill, Nyla Rose, with this nutty build of Jade not being able to get her belt back. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the Jarrett and, Jarrett and Lethal versus Sting and, and Darby Allen. They they spent a little bit of time on it today. Jarrett only got to cut about a 15-second promo. He cut uh, the Wayne Bloom promo. I'll don't handle wind, this. Don't wind me up. Uh, oh. But, uh, you know, I think there will be intrigue there. You know, you get, you'll get that. Oh, I think this match steals the show. I I think Crazy Sting's going to jump off a balcony. And sure. I think Lethal and Darby will be great. And Jared's been saying his prayers and eating his vitamins. And he looked, <laughs> yes. he looked good in the flare match. I mean, flare was the problem in the last flare match. It wasn't Jared. He's been over. Jared, Jared's going to bleed. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. He's going to bleed here. And it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be far more interesting than people give it credit for. We, we said this was the best built match on the show. Yes. I'm, I I don't I don't mind it at all as long as it's kind of a special thing and Jeff Jarrett doesn't become a a, a weekly character. But you know we'll see. I, I I don't know what I expect to happen, but uh, I think it'll be fun. Stand I think Sting's gonna slam somebody. That's well, what's gonna happen. It, it'll just be fun because it yeah. has yeah. the nostalgia and it has two really good wrestlers in it at the same time. So it's usually a good mix. Uh, and then uh, the last match is Wardlow and Joe. Uh, and powerhouse wow. Hobbs, uh, Joe got to cut his heel promo. Um, Wardlow, the the baby face, attacked him from behind. Hobbs, the heel, attacked everyone from the front. I, I was very confused <laughs> watching. I was like, "Wow, this is a little bit reverse." Joe, They're big guys. Joe, They're not smart guys. So Joe just... blatantly gave away the surprise attack. Yes, by, like, even looking behind his back. <laughs> Where is he? Did he miss his cue? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ultimately, last last question I have for you: scale of one to ten, what is your interest going into not Sunday but Saturday? Uh, four. Wow, that's amazing. That was my first instinct as well. Mine's a four. That 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 tells you for for two guys who watch. Every single episode of Dynamite in heavy detail. You guys are watching for stuff that, uh, you know, people who aren't taking notes and, and doing a show are, aren't catching. So that is that is not a good sign for me. I'm a little bit higher, but I get it. I completely get it. I, if if I wasn't having friends over on Sunday night or Saturday, sorry, I'm now I'm screwing up too. If I wasn't <laughs> having friends over on Saturday night and it wasn't like yeah, wrestling was. night, uh, I would. I don't know. It's, I wouldn't say it's skippable, but it's not. It's not quite WWE non Big Five show where I'm like, oh, like I'll just I'll, I'll watch it at some point in the evening on in the background. Though those shows are getting a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I you know it's, it you feels like still it feels like bucks. It feels like all these matches are going to be a bit overbooked. Yeah. If you had asked me, and I mean, and you saw the post that I did in the fight game group uh, earlier in the week when they AW sent out the official card. I was a lot higher on it three days ago than I am today. So I would have probably said six, six and a half. Yeah. He on... cooled he cooled down on the go home show. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Yeah. But uh, maybe they will over deliver. That that sometimes can happen. And then people forget mm -hmm. about the entire build because yes. they like the show. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so check out Jeff and Paul up usually, I would say, about two to three hours after the East Coast viewing of Dynamite is up. Their thoughts, they go over the show in detail, all the AW news, all the AW stuff that's going on, and that is on the Patreon, uh, Fight Game Media. The, you can see the link there on video, uh, patreon.com, front slash Fight Game Media. Thank you guys for doing this. In the future, I would like to do this again, you know, maybe for other big shows and we can kind of sure. do little little previews like this. All right. So for Jeff and Paul, I'm Double G. We'll see you when we see you. Peace out.